everybody, I am Hawkblood or Laura and welcome or welcome back to my channel. First of all, thank you so much for 100 subscribers. I know it's quite little compared to a lot of other channels, but it still makes me happy that apparently some people enjoy the stuff I make. But since I'm great at digressing, let's get straight to the topic. Happy Pride Month, everyone. I know I'm quite late to the party, but I actually didn't plan to do a video on this because I don't really like talking about my sexuality anymore due to different reasons, but mainly because my social circle is very supportive and doesn't really care in a good sense. So I stopped really engaging with thinking about my sexuality and trying to explain it or think about it too much. But thanks to the video of Radhika, I kind of remembered how it was for me when I was questioning my sexuality the first time and how much a video about another person who feels or experiences the same would have helped me in that time. Currently, I am identifying as an aromantic asexual, since that is the closest term to describe what I am experiencing. If you want it more specified, I would say that I am aeroflux and egosexual or in some cases demisexual, if you could say that. I, however, feel like egosexual describes my feelings in a better way, but it's also fluctuating between that and just plain asexuality and disinterest. My journey with finding a term that described my feelings was a very challenging one that included a lot of emotions, sweat, blood and tears. I was always a very open-minded child that grew up in a fairly liberal environment, considered the early 2000s, so queer topics never were a big taboo topic for me. I never really cared about sexuality up until being around 11 or 12 years old when my peers started to have their first crushes and somewhat romantic relationships. At that time I was starting to get interested in the overall topic as well. However, I cannot say or remember if it was due to genuine interest or because I was still affected by peer pressure back then. In discussions with my friends, I figured out quickly that everyone, and with that every gender, was kind of on the same level for me, if it came to attraction. So I started identifying as bisexual, since that was the only term I knew besides hetero and homosexuality. Additionally, not knowing that there are differences in the levels of attraction you can feel. During that time I was very interested in anime and Tokyo Ghoul especially and a friend of mine and shortly after our whole friend group got very invested into the online yaoi and fuyoshi scene. Disgusting, I know, I will talk about that in another video as well but it's relevant to my identity finding process. Because being invested in the yaoi scene on Instagram and Tumblr also meant that you sooner or later would be discovering the LGBT community online where I found the term of asexuality. At first I didn't give it a lot of attention and just learned about all the other colorful identities because I just figured out that there's just so much more than being straight, bi or gay. Simultaneously with the belief that I was bisexual, I started a very toxic codependent relationship with a girl that was obsessively into me. We weren't really dating at that point because I always felt super uncomfortable with the thought of doing romantic stuff with her and I thought that was due to the fact I was 13 and not quote unquote ready yet and unconsciously knew that she's super damaging. But we were like a soft friendship with benefits. During that relationship I somehow started to get familiar with the terms of asexuality, ending up with starting to identify as a biromantic asexual. I don't really know the exact circumstances anymore. I have a hard time remembering the times. All I know is that I figured out that I only viewed all genders equal and thought I was bisexual because I felt equally friendly towards them. I don't know, platonic attraction towards everyone. Why didn't I say that immediately? <laughs> Unfortunately, after coming out about my asexuality to my queer platonic friend, she got extremely angry at me about it, because to her that meant I wouldn't love her back. And that resulted in me being gaslit and emotionally abused a lot. Incidents of attempted, uh, how to say that, unconsensual acts happened? 
We luckily cut contact as best as possible after that because my parents went apeshit after finding out, wanting to protect me of course. Since she stripped all of my friends away from me, I was pretty much alone after that before reconnecting with some friends again, but during that loneliness I met a guy online who I befriended with and also fell into a friendship with a benefit-ish situation because he also was attracted to me and I thought, hey! Maybe I thought I was asexual because I was in an abusive relationship. I am actually still somewhere bisexual, right? And this guy, <laughs> he deserves a video on his own, not gonna lie. But he was convinced I needed healing on my asexuality after I came out to him as biromantic demisexual. And things went down from there. You know, this guy wanted to F me and my sexuality was in the way. So he constructed a plan on how to cure me. Short answer to that, cut contact again after he ghosted me because I didn't send him compromising images of myself, heard twice of him after, one about him being in a far right wing organization and once again some years after when he offered me mushrooms after finding out I had anxiety. I don't know man. but. You see, young me came out of two very toxic relationships in a very short time that got quite abusive after coming out as asexual to them. And sadly, these later caused me to severely want to unalive myself because of being asexual. And as sad as that is, there were a lot of more factors to why I wanted to unalive myself, because of being ace. With how overly sexual our society is, expectations if it comes to relationships and relationship goals, and with one being my parents. While they accepted me identifying as bisexual before, they were very harsh if it came to my asexuality. To this day, I never spoke with them about it after my initial coming out, where a lot of very harmful stuff has been said. Um, my dad threatened to do things to me to quote unquote cure me as well. And I was just overall left with the impression that I am wrong and shouldn't exist and yeah. I actively struggled with these feelings for at least a year. I think that was in a time between when I was 15 to 16. Furthermore, I have developed several <laughs> niche interests, if you can say that, in leather, latex fashion and shibari art. And I think you see where this is going. For me, I wouldn't really call them actual fetishes or kinks because my interest isn't of sexual but aesthetic nature and a lot of people don't really understand that. And I mean, those topics usually occur with an erotic motif or in erotic spaces. So I don't blame people to think that that's contradictory to my asexuality. In fact, I even enjoyed erotic media that included these things because for the first time I had actual connection towards eroticism and feeling appeal to it. It was the first time I felt like I could understand what being allosexual is like. It was the first time I felt some sort of arousing sexual feelings. I don't know how to describe it, but it made me feel normal after all of that misery that happened after me being open about my asexuality. So if you add one, wanting to unalive myself for being ace, and two, enjoying erotic content because it made me feel heteronormative together, you can probably guess what that cost me. <laughs> Right, porn addiction. I got over it quite fast, fortunately, because my current partner, who is an angel in this situation, he really helped me a lot when I felt so devastated about being ace. I first met my partner online five years ago, shortly after I cut that weird guy off. And long story short, we also eventually started dating for real this time, because we matched very well and had a somewhat queer platonic relationship for a while now. And at first I was quite distant about it, feeling uncomfortable with addressing us as a couple, but also being happy with the situation. 
I was very anxious about intimacy with him. In the beginning, it was oftentimes just like joking around, but nothing serious. My partner always reassured me that we can take things in my pace and that he can wave on having a sexual relationship and that he is with me for who I am as a person and that he rather puts his needs back than to see me uncomfortable and feel bad. And I am still extremely grateful for that, since I know that that's a sacrifice not everyone is willing to take. Eventually, over the years, I started to actually feel the first attraction towards him. By the time I stopped feeling so horrible about my sexuality, since it was the first time that it was okay. My field of friends also greatly improved, and sexuality wasn't a thing that has to be proven anymore. Having the spark of actual attraction really confused me and pushed me a little back into the hole I was before, because I believed that I was a fraud and all the time the others were right. But then it snapped back to disinterest and I figured out that I'm most likely fluctuating between little and no attraction, because shortly after that I felt something again, and then nothing, and then something and so on. My partner always showed me a positive indifference towards my sexuality and eventually I stopped caring as well. With that, the fight inside me died down. Who cares in the end whether or not I enjoy erotic media for the aesthetic but dislike real-life sexual intimacy with others most of the time? Who cares if one week I am okay with that intimacy and the next four months I am not? If the people I love the most don't mind or care about it in the good sense, then there is no need for explanation or justification. There will always be people who do not understand it or think that it's stupid, but why should I care about an angry grandpa? While I'm mostly fine with my sexuality nowadays, I still believe that life would be so much easier for me if I was straight or just allosexual. It would have spared me a lot of discussions, it would have kept a lot of pain away from me, but I cannot change it willingly. Maybe my sexuality will fluctuate one day out of the asexual spectrum, who knows? I'm sorry if this video seems disorganized or seems to lack information at some points. There are so so many factors in the process of finding my identity and feeling comfy with it. And I kind of want to keep it relatively short and digestible. All I really want to say is that asexuality is very hard to accept for a lot of aces. Most of the aces I know have similar stories having felt very broken over the fact that they are ace. It is okay to feel uncomfortable with being asexual at first when you figure it out. Our society is very focused on sexual relationships as a main goal in life to be happy and you tend to internalize these ideas. But you don't need sexuality to be loved or to be happy. If you however still want to explore your sexuality, you can do it as much as you want, but try to keep your own boundaries and comfort in mind. Intimacy isn't fun when one person is suffering. If you have any questions about this topic, feel free to ask them in the comments and I will try to answer them if I'm comfortable with doing so or if you want to share your own stories. Thank you so much for watching, don't forget to give a like if you liked this video and subscribe if you want to see more of my art and want to hear more of me talking about random topics. So until next video, stay safe and stay hydrated.